So here on my workbench, I've got three of the most common types of paint you're probably gonna find in school. Watercolor, ready mixed, sometimes called poster paint, and powder paints. I've also got acrylic paint, which I really like to use. Acrylic paints is what professionals will often use. And actually, if you buy the school versions, it is quite cheap, but unlike the other three, it's much harder to get out of your clothes. So although the quality is great, it's something you may want to really consider if your group is right for it. So let's talk about the four different types. Now you're probably most familiar with watercolor in this format, with these sort of blocks of color, which you simply wet your brush, put it in the block, it picks up some of the color, and then you can paint with it. Now I'm using thick textured paper here, and my brush marks picking up some of the texture. One of the reasons I've decided to use thicker paper is if you, for example, use normal printer paper, what you might find is the paper would start to wrinkle the more wet it gets. The thicker paper is less likely to wrinkle. The great thing about watercolor like this is it shows the brush marks because it becomes much more dense and vibrant where it's put on thicker and where it's a bit more watery, it becomes more translucent. You can mix colors on top of each other. They get a bit dirty, it's okay, because it's quite easy just to wipe it clean afterwards. And also, the great thing about these brushes, a bit of water on them, wipe on some kitchen roll, and you can start a new color totally fresh. Oh, I haven't picked up much paint there, so it's quite translucent. Let's load the brush up. I can see as I'm rubbing it in here, the brush is getting more and more blue. So we can see much more vibrant color on it. Whilst we're talking about blues, you'll see these two here. These are tubes of watercolor paint. They come out a bit more like you might expect paint to be, kind of thick and gloopy. This one's separated a bit from the water in it. So you might put this on a palette, dip your brush in, load it up and paint with it. It kind of works in the same way, except these paints are going to be much more vibrant and come out much thicker from the offset. You need a lot more water on your brush and a lot less paint to get a very watery thin strip with it. So here we are with a poster or ready mixed paint. What I would suggest is if you've got a bottle that's been in your school for quite a while, give it a shake first. This sort of paint tends to separate and can be a bit horrible to use if it has separated. You get like a thick bit at the bottom, really liquidy, almost watery bit at the top. Sometimes that's not full of color either. I'm just gonna put some in my palette here. Look, I've put something about the size of a 5p piece. I try to encourage children when I'm using it to pour out very tiny amounts. You can always add more. It's just so common that you'll see them fill up a palette with paint. And you don't need that. Now the, now the great thing about the ready mix paints or the paste paints is you can use them without water. You can see how nice the colour can be without the water. I'm only using a small brush. A big brush might give us more colour. This paint though is still quite thin when you spread it out. It means it's still quite translucent and you'll be able to see what's underneath. So if you've drawn a picture first and you're basically blocking in colour, you'll see the pencil marks. And if this was dry and I painted on top with another colour, you might get a bit of the colour on top being translucent, showing some of the purple through it. Let's mix it with a bit of water. And you can see when it's watery, it's almost like the watercolor paints we just used. Now there is one problem I have with poster paints, and I know a lot of teachers have this too, is when it dries, it can be a little bit crumbly or powdery looking. It's not the best finish. Let's put a thick bit on here and I'll let that dry and we can see what I mean. Again, easy to wash the brush, 
and just wipe it on a bit of kitchen roll. I find when I'm washing my brushes, sometimes it's good to get the kitchen roll and just pull it like this. Oh, I've pulled the brush apart. Pull it like this. And then what you get is the paint that's on the metal bit or the tip of the brush comes off as well. So one way to improve your paint is to drop a bit of PVA in it. Now, most schools are gonna have some PVA or sometimes it's called white glue. Let me just pour a little bit into the pot here. There we go. And now I can simply mix that in with the paint. And what that's gonna do when I paint with it is it's gonna cause the paint to dry in a slightly more shiny finish. A bit like you expect PVA, the white glue, to dry. You know when you leave it to dry, it is quite plastic-like and shiny. It does change the quality and the texture of the paint, as you can see, because the PVA, although it's white, actually dries transparent. It dries completely clear. So when I'm putting this on, it's a bit more like it's watered down, even though technically it's not watered down. It's just got that look of the transparency. Now, this isn't as bad as watercolour paint for making your paper crinkle. And with the PVA in it, I've hardly, I haven't really used any water. So your paper isn't going to crinkle as much. But as this paint dries, it could cause the paper to crinkle. So you could use the paper you use in printers, but I would always recommend a slightly thicker, better quality paper. Now, some schools will definitely have powder paints, which is an absolute classic. You mix it with water. Obviously, the amount of water that you mix with powder can change the consistency of the paint. So let's start, I think, best to start with the powder and then add the water. It's always easier to add more water than it is to add more powder because you probably won't run out of water, but you could well run out of powder. So here we go. Just add a small amount. I'm going to mix it up. As with any of the paints that we're using, I suggest you test them first so you know how they work. You know the consistency of the paint. Different makes are going to respond in different ways. So let's test this one out. There we go. Pretty rich colour. I like it. And again, just like the watercolour, if you've got some on your brush, it can be thick or it can be thin, depending on how much you've got on your brush and how much water you've mixed it with. Let's try diluting this one a bit further, just see the difference it makes. It's acting quite like watercolour there, the way it's dripping across. Now let's try some acrylic. Again, just a very small amount is all I need. Acrylic comes in a variety of different forms. So this is Liquitex basic set. Liquitex make other ranges as well. So the basics are the cheaper ones. The more expensive ones can be a lot more expensive and potentially a lot better quality. And as you go from make to make, there's a difference in quality as well, a difference in consistency. So it's always worth checking out your paints as you use them. But essentially in acrylic paint, let's do it without any water first. It's gonna be a much stronger pigment. Look how deep and dark that is. And a lot of times, you may not even need any water with it when you're painting. But just like the other paints, you can add a bit of water and that may help it flow. And it will also dilute the paint, the pigment a bit and make it more translucent. So in this case, the fact it's more translucent means the white is coming in from behind 
and making the purple seem lighter. Let's get our brush really wet, just a tiny bit of paint. So it can be almost like the watercolour paint. The advantage, I think, using acrylics is it dries still with the same vivid colour that you get when it's wet. And it doesn't crack like the poster paint. But like I said, it's harder to get out of clothes. So only use it with the right class, with the right aprons on. It's also a bit harder to get out your brush. So unlike the watercolour paints, it probably does need a good wrap round. And if you've got paint up the brush, which is bound to happen with kids and acrylic, make sure you clean that as well. Because the more the paint dries around the edge of where the brush starts and the handle ends, the worse the brush nib becomes. Essentially, it has less movement, less movement until it just dries solid. And with acrylic, it can really dry solid. The great thing about acrylic though, is if it's all over your palettes, after a little while, once it's dry, if it's thick enough, you can literally peel it off. 